Well, good evening, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review, Beer Dudes United. Uh, I don't know what we're doing. Beer Dudes United might be shelved forever because uh, we can never seem to get people in here. And we get people in, and then people are like, oh, I, don't, I don't want to join because that person's in there. I don't want to join because that person. I, I, I don't know what to do anymore because, yeah, nobody wants to see me sitting here drinking alone. I don't want to see me sitting here drinking alone. I open the panel up every week to anyone that wants to join. Nobody ever wants to join. I mean, we can always have some people come and say hello. It's something that we can do. But that being said, uh, things we were going to talk about today. Um, sorry, me and the comments are fighting currently. I'm trying to move them over to where I usually have them, and it's not letting me. Things have been different on this computer. Very different. Um, what was I going to say now? Uh, first and foremost, I guess, while we're waiting to see if people decide to join or not, we will talk about the Albino Rhino Beer Festival. So people are always asking me, how can I help with the festival if I can't go? Well, you could always buy a ticket online, a ticket scene. Or uh, this year I was very very uh short on money for the festival for reasons that uh are not things i can really talk about they're personal reasons for things that happened two years ago uh some of you will know what that is some of you won't uh but i do have a gofundme set up to try and cover the last little bit of the festival that is waiting to be paid off and if we get anything over that amount we will give it right to the charity which um all my profits always go to the Ronald McDonald House of South Central Ontario, which used to be the Ronald McDonald House of uh, Eastern Ontario, which was uh, Hamilton, the Hamilton one. So, I mean, that's where all my money goes. Uh, last year, it went it went low because of things that happened as well. So, I mean, there's always that opportunity if you want to do that. You don't have to, but I mean, you can buy a ticket or you can go throw something on there and again if we make over the amount of money that i'm trying to make it's it's my last vendor i'm trying to pay off and i've been off work for a month because of uh other personal stuff the heart to heart stuff so trying to do anything i can to get this to go anyway the reason we're going to talk about the festival which happens may 25th 2019 from 11 a.m until 7 p.m at 209 ridge road north ridgeway ontario is one because again all proceeds go to the ronald mcdonald house of South Central Ontario, and two, because a lot of people say it's one of the best festivals in Ontario. I would love to see as many of you there as possible. We have a great lineup going on right now. Uh, let me just go down here and open her up, shall I? Uh, we're currently at 35 brewers and 10, 10 food vendors. Um, so let's just go through the vendors, shall we, before we get going. Uh, Nickelbrook. Brewing Company, Brimstone Brewing Company, Wellington Brewery, uh, Job Site Brewing Company, brand new brewery I've never had anything from, Excited, Old Tomorrow Brewing Company, Cayman Kettle Beer Works, Oast House Brewers from Niagara Falls, The Exchange Brewery from Niagara on the Lake, Anderson Craft Ales. Uh, we have Collective Arts Brewing. We have Stonehooker Brewing Company. Never had anything from Stonehooker. Didn't even know they existed. Hard Iron, uh, Ironwood Hard Cider. Silversmith Brewing Company, Breakwall Brewing out of Port Colburn, the Second Wedge Brewing Company, uh, 26 Acre Ciders, uh, Bose All Natural Brewing Company, Merritt Brewing, Leftfield Brewery, Fairweather Brewing, Grills Cheese, who is the guys that are always inside doing the cheese, the uh, cheese curds, the creme brulees, the, cheese, the grilled cheese, all that stuff. Lock Street Brewing Company, Silly Sir. Uh, Eastbound Brewing Company, Niagara College Teaching Brewery, the Crazy Canuck, which is the poutinery, basically. Uh, the Smoking Buddha, always a fun time. The Merchant Ale House from uh, St. Catharines. Uh, Herald House Brewing in Stratford will be there. Rusty Wrench Brewing Company, uh, Mash Paddle Brewing, uh, Daddy Hacks Snackery will be there. Uh, Press Time Design will be there, pressing shirts on site. Uh, Salem's Lot Scary Hot Sauces will be there. They have some good fucking sauces, too. Uh, Mama's Chilean Empanadas will be there. We have uh, Andrzejowski Pierogies. 
which will be their Trains Coffee Company, which is the company that was there last year doing the cold brewed coffee and the like cold the cocktails, the lemonade coffee, all that stuff. Bacon Crazy, which uh, is replacing the Salted Pig this year. They're another food truck that does all bacon. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Sean and Ed Brewing Company. D&K's Barbarian Jerky will be there selling some jerky. Uh, the Righteous Monger will be there. Uh, Counterpart Brewing will be there. Newark Brewing Company will be there. Eden Grove Cidery. Uh, Double Trouble Brewing Company. I am being talked to right now about humble by Humble Beginnings, so they might be there as well. We'll see how that all goes. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited. I don't know uh, what's going on with you guys. I don't know if anyone's even here because it doesn't it doesn't show that to me anymore. It doesn't show me if anyone's watching, <laughs> unless I go to the actual website. I don't want to do that. Uh, so if you're here, say hi. If you want to join uh, in on the panel, say hi. I would love to have anyone really just come and say hi. We can talk about anything, beer, movies, uh, any of you that watch this enough know that we will go around and talk about anything, because that's what we do. Um, well, we can even talk about our favorite YouTubers, because somebody just posted a video that I'm going to have to go and watch, which is the Game Chasers. I don't know why. I watch the Game Chasers. They, they, intri they intri uh, intrigue me. They entertain me. I enjoy them. I enjoy them quite a bit. Okay, so as usual, before we went online, I did do some uh, beer, beer reviews, so they will go up in the future. Um, the beer I'm drinking right now, and I don't know if any of you guys are drinking anything, is this right here. It's called Abracadabra. It's from Blood Brothers. Now, it says right down there that it's a nitro, first off. It doesn't really feel like a nitro. It, it might have just a little bit of nitro in it because they don't they don't have a widget in here. But it says shake before opening. That just that weirded me out. I've never had to shake a beer before opening it. I didn't want to shake a beer before opening it. Um, so I didn't shake it. Well, I shook it. You'll you'll see in the review. It did get shook, but um, let's just double check. Yeah, there's no widget or anything in there. So I mean. I knew there wouldn't be, but I had to check anyway. There wouldn't be because, I mean, the only companies that really have patents on widgets is uh, Amheuser-Busch and Diageo, and they're not going to give their patent to these guys. Uh, but for any of you that have not had this beer and have the ability to get it, it is very much worth drinking. And uh, one second here. I just got to turn this off first. Sorry, just had to go uh, turn something off. That's all. That's all. Uh, I guess we will give this a few more minutes and see if anyone joins. And if they don't, we'll just uh, we'll log off for the night. Um, again, it's it's a sad, sad thing, and nobody wants to talk to me. Ask me some questions, guys. Let's let's do this. Let's do a live Q and A. Nobody asks questions when we say that. But hey, anything. Ask me anything. Oh, it's so good. That is really fucking good. It almost tastes like a cheesecake. It's fucking awesome. Ah, uh, okay. So, no Carrie, no Nick, no Greg, no Ashley, no Chet, no Drunken One, no. And you know, I always get, hey, if you if you do these on Fridays, we'll we'll start doing some stuff with you again. And I I don't I'm not going to ever sacrifice my family time for this anymore. I used to do that with my ex-wife, and I did that because I didn't want to be there and it gave me an escape. But I will not uh, I will not sacrifice time with my family 
to do this anymore. Friday nights are either date night or game night, or I have my kids here. Um, so we either have family game night or we have date night, and we're either having family game night with Alicia's family and her kids or with all five kids. So, I mean, it's it's one of those things where that's just not going to be done anymore. Hi, drunken one. Why aren't you here drinking with me? Hey, eh? hey. Eh? Now, I mean, currently, I have seven days a week off, so I could do it any day of the week. But I don't want to start getting things going again on, say, Sundays like we used to do, or on uh, Tuesday. I don't want to get stuff going again on days we used to do things because there's nothing guaranteeing how much longer I'm going to have. What, two weeks, three weeks, a couple months at most? Um so I don't want to start doing any of that. And again, for anyone that's here now that ha wasn't here before, I am currently drinking from Blood Brothers Abracadabra, which is a sour with with a uh, sour sop and vanilla. Sour sop. Sour sop and vanilla shake before opening. It doesn't say that, does it? It does. Read it. Here you go. Uh, one second. Let me let me first do this. Uh, force you to see me because people want to see that. I don't actually know how to present. I'm just going to click right. on myself. I'll take uh, it. But I'm going to click on myself, which might be presenting me. I don't know. But uh, here we go. Bang. Focus, focus, focus. Okay, I can. Uh, yeah. Wow. Shake before opening. Maybe yeah. just do a roll. I don't know. No, no. It's shake. It, it's supposed to be a nitro. Oh. But they don't they don't have a widget in it, right? So there's a little bit of nitro in there and it it tastes like a cheesecake. It's fucking awesome. Uh so what are you doing, Ashley? Uh I just uh finished watching the dual review of my stout and I just put the kids to bed. So yeah, how how was the review of your stout? I think it went pretty well. I got some good good uh constructive feedback on it. So yeah. I was pretty happy with it. Got some uh some good takeaways for sure, uh, but uh, the, the more most important part is that it didn't explode in their face. Yeah, yeah, mine. Like I said, it's over there. I've got to do it tomorrow before I, we go to the concert. Man array of hope. I was hoping to entertain before work. I'm hopping in the shower right now. Oh, well, sorry, man array of hope that we could not entertain you. And Jamie, basement beer reviews. Hey, Chad. One day I'll be able to pop on. Looking forward to the fest in May. Awesome, sir. Awesome. Um, I'm looking forward to it and not looking forward to it at the same time. And that's the way it's going to be until after the festival. Mostly, again, because of uh, money problems with the festival and, and things like that. Like this year, we I really did try to find uh, sponsorship. I got sponsored by uh, one brewery. Well, one brewery said they were going to sponsor and they never did send the money. And then uh, another thing, we, we did get our, we got our merch for free. So that, that was a... Uh, that's that was some money off of off of what we were owing out. That's good. Yep. No, I I have no problem with that. That was more than enough for me. Uh, like I said, I did set up a I did set up a GoFundMe just for shits and giggles. And if we made anything over it, we were going to just throw it into the donation right away. Um, other than that, I like I've always said for years, people on here are always like, "What can we do to help?" Because we live on the other side of the world, or this just buy a ticket. They're online. Buy a ticket. There you go, you've helped. <laughs> yeah, that's true, right? You can't you can't be a manpower for me. You're on, you're on another fucking country or on in another continent, so uh you know. <laughs> yeah. Digital people cannot really uh physically help in person, so now future Mrs. McGee's upstairs, so we can talk about this too. Um I'm letting this be known only a few times. I'll say it a few times and only in these live hangouts. I'm not going to actually post it anywhere where it can be seen and that sort of stuff. If you're at the festival, you will see me get married again. Don't know how that is, but you'll see it happen. Now, how, how sure are you that she won't ever watch back one of these within the next few weeks? Uh, 100% sure. Oh, okay. Fair enough. The only videos she watches are the Heart to Hearts or anyone that she's in. Gotcha. And she watches the heart to hearts to see what I've said and uh, 
not come and yell at me, but to come and talk to me afterwards about things. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Like, like the X would have, you know, bitched about it. Ugh, there's a large c collection of cans over here. Uh, so the next beer I'm going to drink, I'm only drinking it because I want to get rid of it. And oh, that God. is uh, this one here from Steel Wheel Brewing. Oh, it is okay, their yeah. stout. Um, this is not a stout. Okay, this is a fucking black IPA. And it it's so hopped that it's not funny. Uh, all the bitterness on the background is hoppiness. There's no like burnt coffee or wood or roastiness or anything like that. It's all fucking hops. I poured it when I reviewed it. I poured it. I went. I just put it down. And I'm like, yeah, uh, this is gonna be great. Yeah. Now it's I bought. IPA. Yeah, I bought four of their beers, and I am hoping to find a beer I really like from them. I yeah. am hoping for that. Uh, there was no faults in this beer or anything other than the fact that it was way over hopped. Yeah. And I mean, that might be what they wanted to do. So I can't fault them on that. It's just not what I want to drink. Yeah. And that, that's perfectly fine. I took this one up first because I was excited for it. Right. I'm like, awesome. I need to drink this because I am, I, I love, good night, Jamie. I love, uh, I love stouts. So I need this. I need this in me. Right. Yeah. And if, if there's a beer they make that I'm going to love, it's probably going to be their stout. And yeah, then I'm like, oh. What are the other ones right. they have? Uh, they have a pale ale, an IPA, and I think a blonde. Oh, well, the blonde you can sit on for as long as you want, but the other two. Yeah, I, I only picked them up like two weeks ago, so it's not like yeah, they're that old. Right. Like I, I went, it's when I went to Heat Wave. Yeah. So yeah, it would have been, it would have been two weeks ago. Yeah, two or three weeks. Cool. Any other beers that you reviewed today or? Uh, I did that. I did the Abracadabra, and I have an Anderson beer and a uh, Storm Stayed beer at my feet. Oh, cool! Right on. Uh, I, all the all the other beers I have in the house are are a lot older and should be done first. But I'm like, you know what? These beers are older, so I might as well actually do the fresh ones while they're fresh. An extra few weeks for some of the old ones is not going to do them any harm. No, <laughs> and I mean, this is the thing, right? Like, if I can find anyone to come over for a night, we can we can start punching these things off a lot quicker. Yeah, I hear you. I don't even know if I'm gonna actually drink this now that I've poured it. Um, five point five percent alcohol, not not bad, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, if you don't enjoy it, man, there's no 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 sense in uh, taking in the calories, right? So, um, what do we have here for beer news? We don't have much. There wasn't much at all. No. No. Um. We had one, two things for brewery news from the Canadian beer news thing. Ooh. And it, one was, I don't even care. It was Ravens Brewing launches the Conspiracy Membership Club. And I don't give a shit, so I'm not even going to read it. I'm going to just close that. <laughs> uh, and the other one was in Cambridge, and it was Wavemaker oh. Brewing opening up. The hell's that? Wavemaker Craft Brewery opening next week in Cambridge. So they opened up, I think, today or yesterday. Because the Kitchener-Waterloo area needs another brewery. Yes. Uh, a new brewery headed by a multiple award-winning brewmaster will be opening its doors next week in Paint Cambridge. This was posted on the 13th of uh, March. So, new uh, Wavemaker Craft Brewery is being founded by Scott Panther. Ooh. Is that a oh, Panther? sorry. Potler. Potler. <laughs> Scott Potler. <laughs> Scott a, Panther. A gr graduate of Niagara College Teaching Brewery. Uh, he is a recent graduate, too. I think it was two two ago that he did it, that okay. he did his thing. Two of the, uh, the beer festivals ago that he yeah. was in. I don't think I've uploaded his video yet. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you he has worked at several... I told you how many videos I have, right? There's I know, like man. 180 videos on this computer still. And this phone currently has about a hundred on it. Yeah. The the bad thing about having like a like a five hundred and twelve gigabyte fucking card is I can just keep going. It just holds a lot. Holy shit! So this uh, guy's been out of he's been out of school for two years and he's. Oh uh, no! It would have been a, it's about a year because okay. remember they do not even actually probably like eight months because it's per semester they do the festival right. Gotcha. So uh, Wavemaker will be launching with two of his beers on tap. First brew, Hellas Bach, uh, and a still-to-be-named Oatmeal Stout. And he will have guest taps from Great Lakes and Brothers Brewing. Okay. 
sales will be a limit uh are limited to glasses on site consumption only but once the final license is received beer will be available to go interesting I wonder why he only has two of his own beers on tap i don't know looks like he's set up with about 12 taps though hmm. I, 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 huh. who knows maybe they don't have their whole pr production facility set up but Came in yeah. Delaware, we're able to There's... run eight taps on a fucking homebrew system. So, <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? It's yeah, the Hellas Bach, eh? Interesting. So, what else do we have? Uh, well, let's see if anyone's talking to us, and then we will continue. No, the last thing said was "Nighty Night" by uh, Drunken One to uh, Jamie. Uh. Miller Coors has actually sued Amheuser Busch now over the corn syrup ads. Oh, are you serious? That's cool. It, it you knew it was coming. <laughs> like as soon as they pulled out of that group, that uh, group to take over the beer world, yeah. you knew it was coming. So yeah, the the lawsuit has been filed. That's funny. And I mean, they are kind of right because they they say that they're doing it because Amheuser Busch tried to frighten the consumers into not buying their beers, and that's exactly what they tried to do. And they tried to do it underhandedly, going, "No, we don't use corn syrup. We just use rice syrup, right?" And, and shit like that. Like, like it's 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 hysterical because they scared the consumers into not tr drinking Miller Coors stuff. Yeah. By telling them that they don't use something, but they use the exact same thing, just not the same thing. Just yeah, it's that's so silly. Oh my god, I can't believe that happened. Oh, yeah. Fuck. So I'm not even going to read through the whole thing. Anyone that wants to go and read it, it's all over the internet. I just find it funny that the lawsuits actually happened, and for the first time ever, I'm actually agreeing with Miller Coors on on this lawsuit. They really should be suing them. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem like a frivolous lawsuit or anything like that, so. Oh, fuck. <laughs> now, this one is great, and I don't know if I would drink it like these guys are, but uh, apparently two men found a mysterious fridge full of beer sent from the heavens in a muddy <laughs> Nebraska field. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. So what do we have here? You can't always get what you want, but sometimes, as the saying goes, you get exactly what you need. That was certainly true for two Nebraska men who were really craving a beer after a long day of cleaning up a flood-damaged property near the Platte River. Earlier the, in the week, a bomb cyclone swept through Nebraska, causing $1 billion worth of damage and killing at least three people in Nebraska and Iowa. Uh, Kyle Simpson and his friend Galen Stufer spent much of Tuesday trying to repair the bomb cyclone's damage on Simpson's property. They decided to wrap up their cleanup at sunset. Simpson told the Lincoln jo uh, Journal Star and began the mile-long walk through chest-high icy floodwaters to get home. As the men walked, Stufer saw something in the distance that appeared to be a mini-fridge. As they got closer, <laughs> the men investigated... Per the paper, as it turned out, it was a fridge, and it was full of ice cold beer, Bush, Bush, and Bud Light, to be exact. <laughs> oh, <girl. laughs> I mean, I feel bad for whoever lost their fridge, but you have to think it's hysterical that there's a fucking fridge that flew up into a field because of a fucking and it stayed closed. It was everything was intact by the yeah. sounds of it. That's hilarious, and it was still cold, but I guess because it was sitting in water. Yeah, yeah, like it's 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 great. I think it's a great story. That's a funny story. Uh, we have Nick's Nick's favorite thing here. This craft beer was formulated to develop Kodak film. Yeah, he he mentioned that today, and I don't really understand what the fuck that means. Well, let's let's find out. Let's read this because I went out and found this. Uh, craft beers can have a really interesting ingredients and flavors, and even get a little quirky. Delaware Craft Brewery, Dogfish Head, of course, has launched a new beer that will quench your thirst and let you develop film. It's named Super 8, and yes, just as the name suggests, it can be used to process Super 8 motion picture film. Well, that's not going to help you there, uh, Nick. You don't do Super 8 motion picture film. 
Uh, it has come to life as a result of a happy accident. When Dogfish Heads founder Sam, Sam Calione appeared on a Kodak podcast in 2018, he learned that beers with high acidity and vitamin C could be used to process film. Interestingly enough, the brewery was working on a beer with a similar ingredients profile at that time. And so the idea was born. The brewery reportedly sent early batches of the beer over to Kodak, and they tried developing Super 8 film with it successfully, apparently, as you can see in the video above. As a result of its interesting collaboration, there is now a craft beer that you can use both for developing Super 8 film and for getting drunk. Okay, what chemicals were they using? High acidity and vitamin C. Why would they be mess around with the pH that much and then randomly I add them adding vitamin C to it. I don't know. Well, this is dogfish head though. You said, right? Yes. They are. They're always doing crazy dumb shit. Yes. Aren't they the ones that, that made what was at the time or maybe still is the strongest beer ever? Uh, at the time. Yeah. It was worldwide stout. It's no longer that, but no. Uh, they've also made the uh, the beer where you would chew the corn and spit in the cup, so the spit beer. What? The spit beer. I have not heard of that. No? No. Wow. Clearly I've been missing out. My life is incomplete. <laughs> what about the, the squirrel cadaver beer? Oh, the one that's inside the squirrel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it was that Dogfish Head as well? Uh, no, I think that was uh, Brew Dog. Okay, yeah. Got it. Still silly. Those those poor squirrels gave their life. Well, the squirrels probably died already. How about this one? How much a beer bottle of beer costs in the world's nine cheapest cities? So let's just double check this story, see if we're doing this in US, which is my guess. Okay, so we are looking at in US dollars. Chanel, India. Current average price of one beer in US dollars, two dollars and five cents. So okay, two oh five, not bad. Um, I've only really had Kingfisher as Indian beer, so I don't know how I feel about that. Buenos Aires, Argentina. Current average price of one bottle of beer eighty nine cents at US. Wow, that's good. Yeah, I, let's go there. Uh, Lagos, Nigeria, fifty three cents. I'm still not going there for the. No, beer. no, I am not going to Nigeria. Uh, Karachi, Pakistan, three ninety seven. Well, that's not really all that cheap, guys. That's that's more money than an average bottle of beer in Canada. Yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not going there anyways. So sorry. Bangalore, <laughs> India, four twenty five American. Jesus, they must not have any local breweries around there. Uh, Almaty, Kazakhstan, We're looking at ninety two cents. Okay. Uh. Tashkent, Uzbekistan, two dollars and three cents. Damn, or Uzbekis. Damascus, Syria, eighty-seven cents. And lastly, what is the no? What's the last one after the Syrians? We have Venezuela, Caracas, Venezuela. At a dollar forty-two. Okay. So yeah. really, there's a lot of these aren't that cheap. I mean, no, cheap. when you think that they're in the U.S. dollar, right? Yeah. Like Lagos, Nigeria, sure, fifty-three cents. I'm not going to Nigeria. Um, somebody will send me to fucking Tazan, Taz, uh, Tanzania, and I'll be dead. Um, yeah. Argentina, sure, I, I would go to Argentina. But oh, I mean, yeah. those those are the only two really, other than the Syrian one, that are under a dollar. And really, unless it's under a U.S. dollar, it's not really worthwhile. 
I mean, when you're looking at the three or four dollar U.S. countries, those are like five, six dollars Canadian, and it's not it's not worthwhile anymore. Yep. Oops, not. I found something here from the Wall Street Journal. The beer prices around the world. Compare the prices of an 11.2 ounce beer at the supermarket and at the bars in cities around the world. So these are. Okay, one second. Before we do that, we'll read that one. Very next. Uh, we just have two comments here. Uh, first from Middle Fra, bottle of homebrew from Mitz or DIO's basement. Priceless. Okay. Uh, Manta Ray of Hope, I have two questions for you. Do you like YouTuber Brittany Venti? I've never even heard of her. And have you ever tried Ballantine Triple X Ale? Best 40 I've ever had. Uh, the only Ballantine I had was the uh, the IPA. I don't know if you've had anything there, I Ashley. Have not. I have not had anything from Ballantine. So let's uh, let's quickly uh, look up who Brittany Vent is while you continue. All right. So this this compares the price in the supermarket to the bar. And uh, then it's got some other mumbo jumbo about how much these people drink per year in liters, and how much they spend. But I don't really care about that. In Abu Dhabi, which I don't really quite understand, since isn't alcohol illegal in some of these Middle Eastern countries? Yes. So, anyways, well, maybe not in Abu Dhabi. In Abu Dhabi, it's one seventeen, a dollar seventeen U.S. is the average supermarket price, and the bar price is eight dollars and fourteen cents. Yikes. Do not go to a bar in Abu Dhabi. Mind you, Abu Dhabi is just a big tourist zone, so I guess that sort of makes sense. Um, what's Amsterdam is 88 cents in supermarket. Uh, hey, look, Chase is here. Okay, continue. Oh, just... and uh, we got 68 cents in Barcelona as a supermarket price, and 60 cents in Belgrade. Bel yeah, Belgrade. Very interesting. Athens, Auckland. Okay, Auckland, New Zealand, $1.67 is the average supermarket price. Um, so that's that's pretty much in line with what I guess we would pay here, I guess. And then five eighty eight dollars uh, at the bar. And, uh, well, you're looking at American, right? Yeah. It's done in American. So yeah. average average price here for a beer is what? two two forty to two ninety now. Okay. Hmm. Beijing, dollar thirty nine supermarket price. Six thirty five in the bar. Hmm. Did you know that South Korea is the uh the largest on average consumer of alcohol per person? No, I did not. Excuse me. Uh, I, I've had some self, South Korean beers, uh, height. Yep. I, I've never had South Korean beers, but I, it's it's not even so much beer that they drink a lot no, of. No, it's just beer. alcohol. Soju. What's going on? Oh, my Lord, look who it is. Hello? What's going on with you there, beer zerker? Oh, fuck. Just fucking sitting around. Oh, all right. Okay. You oh, is this firing up a fucking hangout or what? Yes, sir. We are here just hanging out, doing our thing. Oh, reading random beer prices from around the world. Ah. The, Are we the most expensive or the... um no we're definitely not the most expensive. Abu Dhabi's pretty damn expensive. <laughs> Fucking Abu Dhabi. Damn Abu Dhabi. Big what was they were Oh I see. This is all alphabetical. Okay, that makes sense. Um it's Canada. Chicago average supermarket price a dollar thirty seven bar price five seventy six. Interesting. Ooh. Well, how about this? So this was posted a day ago. This is an exact 
reverse of the last one. Uh, what will beer cost you in the most expensive cities? Okay. So the 10 most expensive cities instead of, you know, the other way around. So uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, $2.94 American, which actually is funny because, you know, some, but this is, you know, the whole city expense, yeah. right? So in Israel, it's cheaper to buy beer in Tel Aviv, sorry, it's cheaper to buy beer than it is in some of the super, super cheap cities, but you're not going to be able to live without a good good job, basically, is what they're saying. Yeah. You could be a drunk on the corner, but... <laughs> uh, New York, 333. One second. Talk 333? Same. <clears throat> Tokyo's expensive. Holy, two thirty-eight <laughs> for a bottle of beer from the supermarket. But I think Oslo. Oslo's got to be the expensive, the most expensive. Three forty-five, the average supermarket price. Okay, sorry guys. Uh, for two weeks now, we were looking for my coffee grinder. Two weeks we were looking for it. Couldn't find it anywhere, so we bought a new one. She just comes downstairs. She goes, guess what I found? I go, what? She goes, what were we looking for? I'm like, my bank card? She goes, no, I didn't find my bank card. What else? Uh, pulls out the fucking coffee grinder. Apparently, I put it in a fucking box of, uh, of mason jars. Because that makes the... It, it the does. Whole, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it makes, makes perfect sense. Explain why you couldn't find it, though. That yeah, hundred percent. So uh, Oslo is definitely not a place for beer drinkers to go and visit and buy beer at the supermarket because the average price is three dollars and forty five cents a bottle. Okay, well, sh are, are you still are you doing my list or is this just the supermarket? Uh, no, no, this, this is my list. So okay, you continue your list, then we'll go through mine. Oh no, you you can okay. go. Okay, well, we'll go uh, Copenhagen, Denmark is next at two sixty one. So again, like these are expensive cities, but the beer is cheaper than in some of the cheap cities. Seoul, South Korea, three fifteen. Osaka, Japan, two fifty. Uh, Switzerland, Geneva, Switzerland, a dollar fifty four. Uh, Zurich, Switzerland, three twenty five. That's a big difference in the same yeah. country. Hong Kong, a dollar seventy seven. Paris, France, two dollars and ten cents. Singapore. 237 and bang we're done that's all the cities so can i can i pick some cities you can tell me what they cost <laughs> oh no unless they were on that that list i don't know but well, i do well, have not every city's on the list every major city? no no not all of them mm, fuck. i do have the 10 most expensive beer bottles from 2017 bottles yeah, just single bottles. Like uh, PBR eighteen forty four at forty four dollars a bottle. Uh, don't think I'd be buying that just because I'm not paying that much money for PBR ever, even if it's great. Uh, Tutor Camu Ale seventy five dollars a bottle. Uh, Brew Dog Sink the Bismarck eighty dollars a bottle. That is known as one of the most uh, high ABV beers in the world. Sapporo Space Barley, which is a uh, thing made with like stardust, moon dust, basically, uh, one hundred and ten dollars a bottle. What the fuck? Sam Adams Utopia, one hundred and fifty dollars a bottle. But that's I don't want, I don't want no fucking space dirt. In my <laughs> Scorch Brow, Scorch, uh, fifty-seven, two hundred and seventy-five dollars a bottle. Honey, can I buy that? No. Okay. How about Cram Ambassador Re Reserve Lager at eight hundred dollars a bottle? Carlsberg Jacobs Vintage Number One, four hundred dollars a bottle. 
dude. These aren't even sours or anything. No, Brewdog <laughs> End of Histories. <laughs> this is the one. This is the bottle that uh, Ashley was just talking about. So the End of History is seven hundred sixty-five dollars a bottle. These are the bottles that are bottles of beer inside a taxidermied squirrel. <laughs> oh my god. Well, it sounds like a lot of these beers are like basically Carlsberg or something. <laughs> uh Antarctic Nail Ale is eighteen hundred dollars a bottle. Jeez. People are willing to pay way too much money for things. Way too much money for things. Yeah. You, don't, you don't need a great camera or anything there, Paul. You don't need a great anything. It all works. It all works. Look at the shit the quality my camera is. Shit, I'm still in black and white. I need to get a, a new camera at some point in my life. This this actual webcam, uh, this has been going for six years now. Yeah, webcams are pretty shitty, but especially with like not a lot of light, but like even if cell phone has pretty well, recent. this this actual corner was really good until we painted the wall. Now I need to get a lamp over here. It's not bad. It's not as bad as my webcam. I'll tell you that. <laughs> my webcam is total shit, man. So next beer will be Anderson Craft Ale's Brown. Oh yeah, is that an Ontario beer? They are from London, Ontario. They will be at the Albino Rhino Beer Fest. They make some good beers. Uh, I'm not 100. percent I'm not 100 percent loving this beer. This this beer actually reminds me quite a lot of uh, Newcastle Brown. Oh yeah, yeah. Newcastle was a good introductory beer for me, but yeah. Well, that's basically what this is, right? It's a great introductory uh, brown ale, but that's that's about where it ends. I'm drinking my Imperial Rye Stout right now. I have to do Ashley's Imperial Stout at some point. I have to review it. This one's fucking awesome. It is like 10% rye stout, and it is fucking smooth. Well, he is a, be a Belgian and an English ale yeast. Dude. And it's uh, smoother than 1050. Is so, it? Yeah, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, it's fucking thick. Got enough hops in it too, so I was worried, but it's good. Turned out pretty good. If I get a good bottle, you know, I'll hope you some of the bottles are shit, but you don't want too much sediment. You're acting too much sediment in there or something, in there. which is weird because I bought I batch primed, so I'm trying to figure out why I got a couple of shit bottles here and there. Oh. Yeah, I never when I whenever I would homebrew it, I would never do the each bottle thing. I would just batch prime. Yeah, batch prime is the way to go. It's so it, and then because you rack into a bucket, so you really <clears throat> eliminate a lot of sediment. And then it's stirred too, so you make sure that your ABV and everything's equal because you know you put it in a new bucket, and then you had to stir in priming sugar, so that way you know your batch is mixed. So. Your bottle should be consistent in theory. Yep. I I full heartedly agree with you, sir. Actually, Ashley's a home brewer too. Ashley, do you like uh, batch priming or do you like single bottle priming? Batch. All right. So that's all three of us agree on that. Yeah. And I, I'm assuming by bottle priming, you mean like, like, like those little carbonation tabs that you drop in? That or the spoons of sugar that people will do the old oh, way. There's way too much variables yeah. in that. Yep. Well, and I find too, I only put like about 240 or 50 grams of sugar in my batch. Yeah. And I don't cold crash. Otherwise, it'll everything will be over primed if you use like, I guess, what the beer kits recommend. So I use about half of what they recommend. Yeah, I, I, I personally don't use table sugar for my uh, priming. I use uh, dextrose. Um, yeah, that's what I've been using until I run out and then I might use brown sugar. Yeah, I... I think maybe once or twice in a pinch I've used table sugar. Um, I, I remember when I first started um, brewing, I was doing one gallon batches and uh, uh, my wife bought me a kit from a Brooklyn brew shop and they, they suggested using three tablespoons of sugar, which I did for my first batch. Oh, and holy, holy shit, man. That was like, 
fucking all yeah. over the place. Your whole beer would end up on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I quickly realized after my first batch of beer, you know, it turned out okay, but holy shit, it was way over carb. So uh, then I just stuck to two tablespoons, I think, of honey after that. And, and then ever since then, yeah, I've just been all on dextrose. So. Okay. Next beer for the night is uh, The Hunter from Stormstade. It's the American Porter. Nice. Amer oh, okay. American Porter. I love that. I love that stuff. It's not really an American Porter. It's more an English Porter. Oh, okay. Well, that's even better then. Yeah. I, I actually, because I get scared when I see American Porter because, you know, it's always hoffed and this and that. And I'm like, okay, I'm a little worried. Drink it. And I'm like, oh, I like this. I like it when they do like put American hops in a lot of things, but I, so I guess and this is uh, American yeast in it. I have no idea what they did. Five or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Eh? I don't know. I just find certain styles they just need certain yeast. Like there, there's no need to Americanize it or Canadianize it or man and I like you know let's just stay true to the style. But whatever, that's just me. I think when I made my porter, I think I used Naughty, uh, Nottingham yeast from um, – who the hell makes that? Uh, Nottingham is uh, – yeah. I can't remember the name. But Jesus. I know I – know they had Nottingham and they had another one. Bell Saison. Shit. Who the hell is it? Yeah, it makes no difference. It'll come to me in my sleep tonight, and I'll wake up screaming. I, I was using spa spagnols a lot, but I didn't have much luck with their English use. Oh no! Well, me and my brother we both had the English yeast, all in. but me. I like the USO five works really good. That's that's pretty much what I do for about seventy five percent of my beers. Uh, it's hard to argue. I love USO five. Yeah, it's it's, it's always worked, and it always tastes good. Yep. It's it's reliable. Don't have to rehydrate it. You just pitch it. It'll always drop it down to ten ten. Um, you know, it's never under attenuates or anything like that. This flocks, this flocks great. This imperial stout I'm drinking, I pitched and it's like a ten percent. I pitched an English ale yeast in there, but then I threw in S thirty three Belgian to make sure. <laughs> just to make sure, yeah. <laughs> so and I got what I thought was a pellicle forming on top, and so I was worried, but it. Lo and behold, it's not sour. So. Oh, that's good. But it did have some kind of weird reaction where it had like a white, weird foam. Like a white film on top almost? Yeah, it was kind of looked like almost like a mold or something. I was like fucking terrified because I put a lot of work into this beer. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no, fuck, it's going to be ruined or something. But it's fine. I just It was some kind of weird. And it was white, like bright white. Like the head to the beer is brown. Are you making yeah. fun of me? No, he's not. Yeah, no, I'm just racist, and I don't want any honkiness in my beer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> ask ask dumbass what he did to our mild. Oh yeah, no, I totally infected the shit out of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that I mean that is just partial. Uh, I was using a, uh, a fast ferment, uh, not knowing how to properly uh, fast, clean. What's a fast ferment? Uh, it, fast ferment it is a uh, it's a conical fermenter with a uh, oh. it it has like a collection ball at the top is it, it has like a ball valve that you can oh, just, yeah. so you can open and close it you can switch out the ball like the, the collection ball at the bottom yeah um, but I had used uh, I'd used that one a few times and I thought I'd cleaned the valve out properly um, but yeah. obviously yeah. I didn't. So yeah, uh, Chad came over. We brewed what was supposed to be a, a mild, and uh, it turned into a sour mild. And uh, yeah, like so, yeah. was it like, toxic or it, it it wasn't drinkable, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I was washing yeast, and I found that a lot of my uh, containers became infected. Oh, okay. What what are you using? Are you using like well, buckets? Or? I was using a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, because I had a whole bunch of yeast, and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna see if I can save it." When I use like a frosting, like a Betty Crocker frosting <laughs> container, yeah, and it got infected pretty bad. And then at yogurt yeah. containers weren't the best thing to use either. The best thing is mason you jars, man. Have, you got to have a real good jar. With it, yeah, I I, I use mason thing. jars. They they work great. Yeah, those I use those, but I'm a little bit scared to wash my yeast now. Yeah. 
I might no. just buy a pocket and break down and spend the five bucks. Yeah, yeah. I I hear you. I mean, the one of the reasons why I did buy the fast ferment was because you know I was using buckets a lot, and um, and that that was fine. Um, but with the with the fast ferment with the collection ball, um, you, it makes it a lot easier to to store the yeast. Because so I'm yeah. done my brew day. I dump my beer in right. I uh, pitch pitch my yeast, and then I'd give it two or three days, and then all of the the, the initial troop um, proteins, all that shit, will fall into the collection ball. Boom! You know, uh, you just take that out, you, you dump it, off. and then you put a new collection ball on, and then all your your good viable yeast falls into that, and then you yeah. switch so you that, have that ball, and then it just goes in there, and you got it. You just seal up the ball, you put it in the fridge, and you're fucking good to go for next time. So oh, that's pretty handy. Yeah, so I mean, now that the weather is starting to turn, I mean, I've I've been doing mostly one gallon batches all winter, so on my stove top. So now that it's getting warmer, I can open up the garage again and brew some bigger beers or bigger batches. So I want to get a ten gallon kettle. Well, actually, I want to get a fifteen gallon kettle and do ten gallon batches. And do ten ten gallon batches, yeah. Yeah, I would do that too. It's just such a pain in the ass to move that around. Well, I got a turkey pot, but the thing is, is that a lot of times my batch will be like pretty close to the top and i'm always like mm. having to babysit it for boil overs yep absolutely uh so drunken one is waiting on his american lager which should be ready next week 11 gallons oh, see right. i got i got rid of all my equipment and that's the thing right when we uh, when i first was separated and all that i started selling things to survive because i was paying for everything on my own so i have nothing like there's there's, I have a brew bucket that was a puke bucket at one point. That's what I have left. Nice. <laughs> uh, and for me, home brewing, uh, I would always use the buckets just because I didn't want to spend the money on the fermenters. That being said, I hated carboys. I wouldn't use carboys. Well, they're expensive, and you can break them. And they're, yeah, they're scary if they break. That's for sure. I've seen enough ho uh, horror stories. And uh, Drunken One answered our question. It's Dan Star. So thank you, Drunken One. Dan Star makes uh, oh, okay. the Nottingham yeast. I've only used it. Uh, oh, when I first brewed, I, I got a packet of that. But that's before we had Spagnols, and now I got. Uh, there's a pretty good brew outlet. Uh, these guys got a uh, brew supply outfit, and they they're selling the selling us liquid yeast now, but I haven't used yeah. it yet. I remember I used to I uh, used to have fights all the time with uh, Craig Tube about things because you know he would always tell me you know I home brew because. It's better for me. It's this and that, and he would always homebrew with with the extract kits. Like yeah, uh, yeah he does extracts. Yeah, he does extract kits, which yeah. is fine. But yeah, I'd sit there and I'd be like, "You're basically using the exact same thing Molson's using and Labatt's using, and all." No, I'm not. And, yeah, you are. I'm not saying it's bad. Like I've actually won all grain competitions with kits because I put it in as a kit as an all grain, even though it's not. And nobody can tell the difference in the flavor. Like if you know what you're doing. And you add your extra hops, you add your extra like you you could make amazing beers with with the kits, even even just straight up kit beers are pretty damn good. Uh, they're not amazing in my opinion, but they're pretty damn good. And there's nothing wrong with them. It's just when you're saying that the reason you're doing it is because it's so much better for you and it's so much better this and that than than the big guys. Yeah, that's when it gets bothersome to me because you're lying to people. He's not, he's not well. He's not filtering. And he's probably he still has and there's still bottle conditions, so he is getting more nutrients from the live yeast. Oh, I wonder if he does bottle condition or, or if he just uh, kegs it. I would assume he kegs though. He uh, goes through a lot of beer, so he might keg. I don't know if he would. He I know he used the bottle when he started. He actually has a, some good videos on kegging. Oh yeah, but um, no, like I'm not I'm not taking anything away from him. He's a great guy. He knows what he's doing. I me, me and him just used to butt heads on that one aspect. I agree. I, 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 I'm, I'm more anti kit than you are. I, I don't like kits. I, I like extract more than I like bags of word. Okay. Believe it or not. Because the bags of word, I can taste the bicarb and the acid. I, I've never tried this bag of word. Bag of word? Yeah, it's easy because you just dump it in your fermenter and pitch your yeast and away you go. Are you but, serious? This is sold. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, but you have to add a you have to add a bicarb packet of like basically it's a base like baking soda, but it's like different. It's like chalk or whatever. You dump it in, 
and it neutralizes the acid they use to preserve the kit. Oh, but I can kind of taste the acid, then I can also kind of taste the bicarb. Gotcha. And so I'm not. So I would rather do an extract kit. And then when it comes to kits, if anyone wants to do a kit, I would recommend a stout extract because those always seem to turn out better to me than a pale. A pale kit. kit. Yeah. yeah. I've never used a kit to be honest. I've never. A lot of them the kits like you know they well and. If you use a different yeast, it might be better, but a lot of times it tastes like apple juice. Yeah. And so I like the stout ones because it's just the, the stoutiness of it kind of really helps the kid out. It sort of hides a lot of the... Uh... Yeah, it's, it usually turns out to be a better beer, in my opinion. Yeah. But Interesting. I only, never... did a, I only did a few extract and a few bags of wort, and then I started doing one gallon all grain, on my screen. Yeah, because I could use a household blender for a barley meal. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? I, I used to use my household blender for a barley meal. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? If uh, if if you're doing like uh, brewing a bag for a one gallon batch on your stove top, you can do whatever the fuck you want to the to the to the grain. Yeah. Like, you you can pulverize and, it. It doesn't make a difference. And and I never I never had hops on hand when i started because it was like 2013 and we didn't have a lot of stuff around here you know to buy so but with hops and good yeast you could probably make a pretty decent kit now out of well that's extract. that's just the thing right like you can make an amazing extract kit if you really wanted to and yeah, that, that was that was our biggest argument back and forth was i was like you can tell you can have reasons to do an extract kit i don't mind doing extract kits because they're faster they're easier they're they're this, they're that. Uh, they're, like, but you can, you should be using those as your reasons to do this. It's it's better priced. It's you know faster to do. It's less cleanup. It's less equipment. That's the type of stuff you should be pushing on people. Not going. It's better you, for you than the big guys. If you got two ounces of Cascade in the pack, of US for five, you could probably make a pretty good extract kit. Yep, probably. Yeah, you could you could turn out something that would look uh, or that tastes something very similar to Sierra Nevada. Yeah. So drunken one says that he did uh, two row, six row corn, rice, and carapils. Shit, he made uh, Budweiser. <laughs> well, I, I I hear, and I've never used rice in a, in a beer. Uh, oh, I, you know, rice can be really good. Can yeah. See, it, I don't, I don't like the, way. I don't like the dryness and the uh, super sweet flavor that can come off the rice, but that's mostly. Yeah. That's mostly the Asian beers that do that because they use more rice than Bud and all that. Bud's only like 49, 50% where you get the big guy, you know, like you get the guys coming right from Asia and it's it's a lot more and you just get that flavor. Like that's the reason I didn't like the uh, the Japanese lager from Collective Arts was it just had that dryness on the back end. Gotcha. When I made the Albino Rhino uh, commemorative beer, the it was a, it was a huge um, fucking... And I made my own rice milk and coconut milk combo on the stove. And I'll tell you, rice will give you an amazing fucking head on the beer. Like the head retention is crazy. It's like an ice cream floating head. Well, I mean, there there was the there was the Cayman Kettle Albino Rhino beer, and oh, what he did was that. he tried to make a beer that was pure white, and he made a beer that was pure white. There was no actual malt in it. Uh, well, he technically threw in like two tiny pieces of malt so he could claim it was beer but it was it was rice it was uh rice corn oatmeal uh oh, fuck i can't remember but it, it it really was it was thick it was pure white it looked just like my hair and it tasted like fucking drywall paste yeah, it was donkey shit and then uh, one of his brewers decided to try and do something with it so that they could use it, and he made a hop tea to throw into it. And somehow the hop tea just completely changed everything about it. It came out golden instead of white, and uh, they ended up throwing out a keg of it, and I yelled at them. I'm like, I had a kegerator. You could have just given it to me. I would have drank it. Yeah. Beer's well, that beer, beer I made uh, about three years ago, that got a little bit of color from it because I, I put oak chips in triple sec because i put orange, <laughs> a mandarin orange to very pops in there so i oaked it with triple sec to give a lot of orange flavor yeah and i smoked the oak chips for about a month and then the oak chips started to 
go like black. Oh. And so when I dumped in the liquor out of the the triple sec out of the oak chips, it darkened the beer a lot. Then I wanted a higher ABV, so I dumped in two kilograms of brown sugar. Oh. <laughs> and I gave it a little bit of a caramel color, but the yeah. rice will make your beer white. Because it was very white, and it was... Actually, let's see if I have the picture here on the computer while we're talking. And if we do, I'll uh, screen share it. Now, dr drunken one, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure if you're still listening. So if, if you're using a high amount of rice, don't you have to counteract that by using a, a decent amount of six row as well? Um, and isn't that why like six row is used a lot by the big commercial breweries? Because they do use a lot of rice. I don't know. That, that, that's what I read uh, as, as a precautionary tale with using rice in your beers. That you, there's something about using a lot of rice. Um, I think it has something to do with yeast viability or enough nutrients for the rice that you have to pump it up. I never had, I, I, I'll tell you, I put a lot of rice in my, and it never mattered. Huh. It's, it, uh, what year yeah, is that? Sugar in there too. I don't know. Maybe it does, but I, I think you'll find They put Anyone? more to make their barley stretch farther. Oh, the yeah. Corn, the corn helps the beer attenuate, so that's why all the adjunct, all the macro guys use the corn as an adjunct because it helps yeah. helps them with efficiency. Yeah. Actually, remember what year they made the albino beer? Uh, that would have been the year before last. So that would have been for 2017 Fest. Okay, I'm just going to go to my Instagram and find it there because I can't find it on my computer. Yeah, I I remember drinking that beer. I took a photo of it, but that was like two phones ago, or at least one phone ago. I, I put up the video of the of that rice beer back up. I put my videos back up on homebrew and everything. And so, if you want to see the rice milk concoction. Oh. It was pretty wild. Yeah, you uh, you usually come up with some intriguing ideas. What you YouTube they, they, normally, they normally turn out, but I've been laying off hops lately, and I've, I have I brewed a beer that didn't taste very good. It was a second runnings for my barley wine. Oh, and okay. I just didn't pop it enough, you know. And I find my brother did the same thing, and then he would like dry hop his keg because sometimes like the hops I find. If you don't have hops in your beer, it can be so malty, it's disgusting. Even if it's not a super malty beer, you kind of need the bitterness to counteract that, the flavor of the... And then when you once you dry hop the keg, because he made a beer with some honey malt, you know, and it, it, it was just not not hoppy enough. It was, it was making a sick, you know, kind of like eating a, a date, date square or something. Well, or were, there any, were, were there any, like, bittering hops added at the beginning of the boil, or...? Well, he had hops in there, but just not quite enough. And and yeah. so then he, he he dry hopped the keg with like some Amarillo or something, and then we were just crushing it. Yeah. Well, Amarillo and I, tasty. And I found the same thing. I was just trying to – I was using a lot of more old world, old world hops lately, and a couple of the beers just weren't hoppy enough, and yeah. they were kind of giving me that sick, sick stomach feeling. Mm. It, it's weird that the hops can actually make the, the beer more – you're way more crushable. Oh yeah, I mean, depending on on the type of flavor profile, the like from that from that specific hop. I mean, like, like Amarillo as an example, like when used appropriately, it's like candied sugar, sweet orange, you know, like really tasty stuff that you just want to keep on drinking. Um, I I actually just made a cream ale with some corn. We'll figure, and then like. Talk about old school hops. I use cluster hops, which is like such an old school American hop. And uh, I just tasted. I bottled it today, and I tasted the sample. And yeah, it's it's got like a like a real dirty, like earthy type of vibe going on to it. And it's it, you can totally tell it's an old school hop. Like it's I, to get something back. I drank a bottle. I'll see if I can find it. To remember what it was. I I just did a beer. It's the oldest beer from Britain. So I'm guessing once they became Great Britain. So it's probably not the oldest beer in England. Shepherd Neem & Co. from the Favor Sham Brewery. Oh. And I, I drank that. And it was really dirty and English tasting. You can definitely get the English yeast out of it. But by the time 
you got down there, yeah, it tasted just like malt liquor. Yeah, yeah. it's just heavy on the malts. Yeah, a lot of those those older English uh, style hops are all very, very grassy, very earthy, not juicy, not. But I, I couldn't believe how much. But you know, at the first, it tasted like the like a British beer where you get that soapy mouthfeel, but it was so heavy because it was an IPA. Yeah. Uh, by the end of it, I was like, "This shit tastes just like old E." Oh God. <laughs> That's true. And I, I, it was still it was still good. Yeah. But I could, and I thought and I thought, oh, maybe old E really is kind of aside from it being a lager, kind of going off this old English style a bit. Yeah. God, Which you know. God. People might get mad from hearing that, but it's it actually tasted profoundly similar by the end of the beer. I, I can't even remember the last time I had an old English. Found it. Pretty- oh, you found the photo? Yeah, I found it. Okay, so for anyone watching, this is the albino beer made by my buddy Dave. So we will screen share right now. So now we are we screen sharing? Not yet. Well, no, I don't see the photo yet. Okay, one second. Um, share. Why isn't it not letting me share? Share. There we go. Bang. So there it is right there. That's so gross. And then we did this just to show you it side by side with another beer. Oh, yeah, that's that's wicked. That's white. Yep. That's awesome. Actually, Alicia, should I grow my facial hair like that again? Sure. As long as I have facial hair, you don't care. Okay. Good to know. Didn't you have like a samurai bun at one point? Yes, I had a samurai bun at one point too. Don't ever do that again. (laughs) Why? Don't ever do that again. (laughs) I haven't seen it, but I could vision and I can envision. Should I grow my samurai bun back? No. No? You guys drink a lot of sake? Nope, not at all. No, um, the last time I drank sake was with uh, Guy. Not bad. I'm sure that went well. Uh, we were at the uh, we were at a all you can eat sushi place, and Guy ordered the sake. Yeah, well, this makes sense. And yeah. Oh, I need to start doing this again. This is this is the look I need to have all the time. This is uh, what people should strive to be right here. That's what people should strive to be. Okay, your white pimp suit. Yeah. That's pimp my white pimp suit. Nice. Do you still have it? Oh, of course I still have it, but it's way too small now. Uh, sorry, way too big. I was going to say way too big, yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. God. That's pretty slick. <laughs> I used, just wear that to the fest, man. Just I no this. Th- I wore this to a festival. When you have the that white was, one, like a, you got the bow tie and everything is like Colonel Sanders. Yeah, I mean, pretty much, right? <laughs> I just need some fried a bucket of fried chicken. You're good to go. Some green coleslaw. You can fuck yourself, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Black hipster glasses. I will give it the old college try. <laughs> no, there's. There, that was at a beer festival too. Oh fuck, that's pretty sweet. Who's that again? That is Dow Skiggins, who runs uh the U.S. Beer Open and everything else. Ah, his face looks familiar for some reason. For no reason, obviously. I miss Helga. Oh yeah. You ever see uh, how good all or? Uh, no. No. Oh, my blue meanie outfit. Blue meanie outfit. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, God. skinny Chad and fat Chad. Oh wow. Eh? Yeah, big difference there, buddy. There's my pants. Fat Chad pants. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Well, that was your trip uh, when uh, Maple Ruski and uh, Redbeard, Redbeard joined us. Yeah. So funny. Months back, Redbeard's like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to meet you. I'd be like, dude, we've met before. You're <laughs> just way too drunk to remember. <laughs> that, 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 that's pretty funny that uh, Maple Ruski got, uh, he got into the program, eh? Yep. I'm actually impressed for him. I'm happy for him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. Kyle doesn't like this one being on the internet anymore. Oh, I'm going to have to remind him about that next time. Because that was me and him together. Yeah. When we did the uh, forty uh, Edward Forty Hands. Edward Forty Hands, yeah. Yeah. Funny stuff. Oh, that made my ex-wife angry, that one. Which one? This one right here. <laughs> Why would that make her upset? Because look where it is. Oh, London, Ontario. Hmm. Is that next to a brothel or something? <laughs> no. No. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I think that's, oh, wait, that was the Christmas party. Is that the same white suit or is that a different one? That's a smaller one. Oh, it's a smaller one. So yeah. you have multiple white suits. I have, I have 13 suits, sir. Yeah, but how many of them are white on white? I have two white suits and one white tuxedo. Well, then. Guess when I'm wearing the white tuxedo. Oh, I can... Take a good guess. I'm pretty sure you'll be right. Yeah. And you know you know how fat this dog is. Yeah, what what was she doing trying to get into that basket? She was right. sleeping. Oh, dogs are so dumb sometimes. <laughs> Crazy dogs. Yeah, that's uh that's going through my whole Instagram feed here. Yeah, you can either watch this live stream or you can just Follow Albino Rhino on Instagram and look at this at your, at your leisure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I do think this is... Oh, that's not when I ripped it off. Is That that was not an appropriate t-shirt for you. <laughs> what are you talking about? It was super appropriate. No, there's nothing appropriate about that at all. What was wrong with that? I love that beard. Do you, though? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I don't know about that. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> How did you even get that shirt on? <laughs> oh, it makes no sense. It was, it was three girls, the smalls, that were given to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're gonna get taken down anyway. Saw a nipple. No, no, they were they were taped over. <laughs> oh, okay, you know a lot of show nipples on YouTube. No, that's why I taped over them. Free of the nipple. Free of the nipple. There, I'm showing nipple with a shark hat on. <laughs> that's when we used to do the pool reviews. God, that's before my time. Yes, yes, it is, sir. Yes, it is. God. Uh, happiness without guilt. How are you, sir? I have lots of happiness without guilt from that one over there. There you go. She she has her headphones in, so she can't hear us now. She can't hear you. Or she's just pretending she can hear you. She can't hear me. Why wouldn't you pay attention to me? Yes. Because what? I'm here by myself. Because she's sick of your bullshit. <laughs> I think she is sick of my bullshit. <laughs> you sick of my bullshit? Sick of your bullshit? Yeah. Well, 
Now you can call me Ewart. Ooh, Perrier. With a little bit of the extra black IPA. No, no, that was the the hunter. Oh, the hunt. Yes. I mean, I do have the mash paddle glass from yesterday down here too. I could fill. Well, well, that, that's all right. <laughs> I got to take all these empties out tonight, though, because uh, tomorrow's garbage day. Oh, you just uh, leave them for recycling? Yeah, yeah. It's it's not worth my time to take them back. Yeah, I suppose not. Especially when I can't drive. Yeah, that's true too. Brock University is under full lockdown. What's that? Brock University is under full lockdown. Brock University is under full lockdown. We had multiple stabbings. Multiple stabbings. Three people. One serious, two stable. Oh, okay, so I'm, I'm going to say this right now. What the fuck is wrong with you people now in the world? Jesus. Stabbing at a university. University that I went to. Oh. All them years ago. Oh, it's at, at the residence. At which res Well, the whole university is on lockdown, apparently. Yeah. Which residence? Village residents. Village. Is. Okay, so village is the one where you would uh, you didn't have a food cart or anything. You cooked your own food. Hmm. That's crazy. Oh, two were two were stabbed and one was shot. One was shot pellet, oh, with a pellet gun. With a pellet gun. Okay. Hmm. Oh, it's just people, man. Wonder why I want to move out into the middle of nowhere, <laughs> as far away from civilization as possible. See, I was I lived in Erp. I was an Erp, a uh, merit wizard. I was a wizard. Where the hell is, is that up in the Ottawa Valley somewhere? No, Erp is uh, one of the residences at uh, Brock. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they have they had what? They have the Q, Erp, uh, Village, the two new ones they made, uh, Lowenberger, I think, and I can't remember the other one. And then there's one more. Uh. Shit. It's not even 10 o'clock. I'm yawning like an old man. You are an old man. I am. It's okay. There was a pellet, a pellet gun shooting. A pellet side. gun. Yeah, two people were stabbed and one was shot with a pellet gun. <sighs> wow. Fucking... They were called to the residence around 8 p.m. They, they see what happens? We didn't go live at 8 p.m. and somebody got stabbed. <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> Quite the correlation there, Chad. <laughs> somebody got angry. They weren't watching us. They got stabbed. All right. They didn't go live yet. <laughs> I'm furious with anger. Someone's getting spiked with the pellet gun. <laughs> God. And apparently, the news says the university is not in lockdown. Oh, they've just probably the cops have probably just sectioned off the block or whatever. Well, if you go mental and, you, and your weapon of choice is a pellet gun. Well, this is the thing, right? We're in, we're, we are in Canada, right? We are, we are in Canada as much as you want to make jokes about it and this and that. And yeah, most people can get guns in Canada. It's harder to go with things like that, though. I mean, the stabbings are more known in Canada. A real gun, Well, he was that he. I'm going to assume he is a university student who isn't living at home, so he probably doesn't have his real gun with him. Jesus. Oh, where were they? I'm surprised the. I don't know. Do they have, they have a lot of jocks there? Because if someone went around stabbing people, like I'm just surprised jocks didn't rip his arms off or something. Well, uh, what what the way village is knife. set up? Village is like uh, it's houses with a shared kitchen and a bunch of different bedrooms and stuff. Each different house, so each house has like. 10 or 12. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably a domestic thing. Like within yeah, probably the, just domestic. Yeah. Within the fucking household of some kind. 
Yeah, I would probably hazard to guess that would be the case. I, I don't think it was a, like when a pellet gun is involved. It's like you just got pissed off at your fucking roommate. Yeah, you're not going around. And stabbed, stabbed with what? It could have been a fucking toothbrush. Could be a yeah, yeah. Sure. I don't know. Sound, sounds like some chick got out of control. <laughs> yeah. it, uh, I just, I, I, just like, I like the different news stories that come out so quickly, though, right? Like, Alicia yeah, tells well, us that it's under lockdown, then we're reading global news stuff that says it isn't. And I'm on Facebook like now, and I, I, see, I see exactly what she's talking about. It does say it's on lockdown. Yep. Is it? Oh, wow. Like, there's things all over Twitter about it being a shooting, not a stabbing. And... That was the original call. So, Chad, are, are you are you now all filled up now with the uh, with the breweries, or? Uh, we have one that is waiting to tell me if they're joining or not, and we still have room for a few more. Yeah. I saw you got that that new one, uh, not not counterpart, but there's another person that's doing contract. Uh, Newark. Newark, yeah. He is going to be starting next. Next, uh, next month. Interesting. And he's another uh, graduate, right, from the uh, from the college? Yes, sir. Cool. Yeah, but when I saw that you posted that they were joining, I sort of did a quick search and found out a little bit about it. So more traditional. Spring Alicious was canceled. Yeah, I read that today too. Not that I am I like one of the few festivals still going because even the Welland Food and Wine uh, Food Festival is canceled this year. You know that Welland is having another festival this year, though. Uh, it's like this rock festival with a bunch of nineteen eighties hair bands. Ooh, when's that? I don't know. It's like White Snake is going to be there. White Snake. Yeah. I need to know when this is. Hold I on. need to make sure I'm still off work for this this rock festival in Welland. There we go. Hold on. I'm bringing it up right now. Uh, uh, Rock the Roses is what it's called. So Rock the Roses, hosted by Rose City Sports and Entertainment, will kick off June 1st. Uh, it's a rock show at the Welland area, uh, Welland Arena featuring Sebastian Bach of Skid Row. Sven Gali and local band Revive the Roses, as well as special guests that have yet to. No, no, they have been announced. Hold on. Uh, Rock the Roses. Let's see. Oh, it's a concert series. It's not a thing. Who is it? Oh, is uh, it? Oh, whatever. Fuck. Sebastian Bach will be June 1st. Uh, July 11th is Hair at the Fair in Niagara. Oh, Trailer Park Boys will be there. That's hilarious. Slaughter, Sebastian Bach, Lawless Sons. Vince Neal is going to be there? Hmm. Vince Neal? Yeah. Oh, so if uh, anyone is needing something to do on Friday night, which would be tomorrow night here in the Niagara region, I have two extra tickets to Mark Galabicki, who is the front man from uh, Rusted Root. And I had no idea who Rusted Root was until I looked them up, and I know a bunch of their songs. Yeah, so apparently the Spring Alicious was cancelled because the businesses wouldn't let them shut down the downtown core. Yeah, they were sick of it. Much. They weren't getting any... Well, you know what? And every year there are cops called on that. There's break-ins. There's everything happening. Yeah. What city's that? Uh, Niagara Falls. Oh. Where are you, Beer Zerker? I'm uh, 
a couple hours south of Calgary. Oh, okay. Like, way the fuck far away. Like <laughs> you're in Canada, or are you in? Is it, is it would that be North Dakota, or would that be Montana? Uh, yeah, I'm almost in Montana. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Canada. So oh, okay, so in Canada. There we go. I used to live in Calgary, so. Oh yeah. Mm. That was cold as fuck for about two months, and then we got warm as fuck all of a sudden. Fucking water everywhere. Oh, I bet. Yeah. It's a big mud hole, man. Like. Yeah. I had, okay, like four, so... I four feet of snow out here just fucking melted, like. So here, here is something, okay? So the, the Brock thing is all over my Facebook. And then while I'm on global news, I see this one. Bus driver in Italy abducts 51 children, sets bus on fire to protest migrant deaths. They did get all the kids out. No one was injured. Thank God. This, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. It, things get weird. I just like uh, getting uh, left wing and right wing retards. Coming out of the woodwork. No so, doesn't moving in the middle of nowhere sound like a very appealing idea? It does. Uh, I want to move into the middle of nowhere and have my own little uh, thing going on. And to be honest, we live in the best country for it because we got a whole shit ton of nowhere. There I recommend it. it. Yep. We got... Good night, good night drunken one. Yes. Have a lovely time. Um... Middlefra, at your age, rusted root has a whole other con. What connotation does rusted root have for you, sir? Like only imagine. No, no, I, that's why I need to know. Well, just use your imagination. I'm not using my imagination. I'm asking. I I'm, believe, I'm, do you want to come and hold the fort while I take these cans out? I'm, I'm sure it has something to do, to do, or along the lines of like rusty trombone or something of that nature. Rusty trombone. Yeah. Again, just use your imagination. So you don't want to come and take over for a few moments? Uh, Chad, actually, I'm. I have to uh, jam out. Actually, uh, sort of reach my time limit for the evening. Well, I'm pretty close to mine too, so I guess we uh, we'll say goodbye to everybody. Cheers, Berserker. It's nice chatting yep. with you. Yep. Peace out. It's only like it's not even eight o'clock there yet. So. <laughs>